Well, hello. Today is Monday, December 21st. We have lots of birthdays. And I don't know if my calendar is just jumbled up or what, but we have some anniversaries too. But when we get to them, I'll explain why I think that my calendar made a mistake. But maybe it didn't. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, I have on my calendar for today that it's B from B's Journey's birthday. So B, I'm singing to you today because I really think that my calendar kind of messed up and I'll explain that in a minute. But just in case, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear B. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. It's also Diane Stewart's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Diane. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. And also, it is Sissy Moore's birthday. I think. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sissy. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Well, I hope the three of you, if it truly, truly is your birthdays, because <laughs> I think I messed up, please let me know in the comments below so I can fix my calendar if I am wrong. But happy birthday to all three of you. And didn't um, Buffy on Family Affairs, wasn't her doll's name Sissy? Oh, no, no, no. That was her oldest sister. Yeah, I knew. It was Sissy, Buffy, and Jody with Mr. French and Uncle Bill. Remember them? Anyway, this is why I'm confused because I also have B and Mark, I have it as your anniversary. So B, did you get married on your birthday or did I mess up or what? I'm still gonna sing a song. You know what, because I love to sing. I can't sing worth a stick. Not worth a stick, what is it? Worth a lick, worth a lick. I can't sing worth a lick, but I'm still gonna sing. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy, 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 happy anniversary, happy, 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 happy anniversary. Well, happy anniversary, I think, to Mark and B. I hope I'm right. If not, you got an extra song this year. Another reason I think I messed up too is it's also Sissy and Johnny Moore's anniversary. So Sissy, did you get married on your birthday too? I'm still singing you a song. It's the end of December, so this could be like your second anniversary song for the month, the year of 2020. It's a whole new wacky year, so who's to know? Or maybe it truly is your anniversary, and if it truly is, I don't want to mess up, mess up on it and miss it. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Happy, 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 happy anniversary. Happy, 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 happy anniversary. Well, happy anniversary. And Michelle, I'm thinking it really is your anniversary, Michelle from Tennessee, because it doesn't have me listed as your birthday. <laughs> but who's to know? Maybe today's your birthday and it came up as your anniversary. It's just that kind of a day. It's just that kind of a day. But Michelle didn't tell me her significant other's name, but it's still, I think, I think it's your anniversary. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy, 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 happy anniversary, happy, 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 happy anniversary. Well, happy anniversary. Okay, you guys let me know in the comments below because I don't think that's right, but I didn't want to take a chance just in case because I guess I'm kind of selfish. I don't think I would want to have my birthday and anniversary on the same day. That's just who I am. But anyway, um, I was talking to my daughter Christy earlier, and my 50th wedding anniversary is July 2nd, so hopefully everybody will be vaccinated by then. I can have a big party, and I told her I want on my front lawn, Jim will hate it because Jim hates anything done on his front lawn. I want a big sign, Jim and Sandy, happy 50th anniversary, or 50 years or something. You know how when you put those birthday signs up, the or the storks when they have the, ba the babies and stuff? I'm thinking... And then we can have a big old barbecue in the backyard, because even if we have to stay socially distant, but oh, let's hope not by then, um, we can all be outside, and we can barbecue, and there'll be the big thing on the lawn so people will know which house it is. <laughs> I'm already planning my, I'm planning a big 2021 20, celebration for next year, because uh, we've missed out on so much this year. We really have. Today is um, the beginning of my bittersweet week. It's like... 
this is going to be a difficult week for me. It really is. And I am not going to turn to food because uh, food has always been my best friend. And that's how I got to be over 300 pounds, 304.2 to be exact. Um, I don't want to see those days again. And uh, as much as food thought it was my friend, it really wasn't my friend. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't help me out. Maybe for that hot minute when I was enjoying it. But um, I'm just going to... I'm going to be really mindful of what I'm eating, knowing that um, I'm sad this week. I really am. I, you know, it's just, it's like a Christmas like no other Christmas I can ever remember. I've always, put something in my mouth. You know, I had a hair in my mouth the other day. But anyway, um, I just have to accept, for, accept it for what it is this year. No matter how much I want to change it, like wishing and hoping and thinking and praying. It's not going to change it. I have to accept her what it is. And um, I have to let go of it. I just have to let go. It's, it's uh, you know, I, I know that's what i got to do. And uh, like I said, I have to have faith that it's going to be better next year. 2021 has got to be better. It's just got to be better. And I'm going to plan on starting in January to plan for next Christmas for a big celebration. <laughs> I, uh, I've got things I can celebrate this year coming up that we can have parties for and I just have to realize that this is going to be a different week. This is just completely going to be a different week. Tomorrow is Kylie's birthday. We usually go to Denise's house and have a big party for Kylie every year on her birthday which starts off my Christmas week tour as they say. So we always go to her house on the 22nd and we have a party and we have cake and we have ice cream and Denise has a nacho bar, nacho cheese, a nacho bar and we just have such a good time. The whole family's together. Not this year. Then on Wednesday would be the 23rd and that was like every year we do our Eve of Christmas Eve dinner with my kids and my grandkids. We open up our gifts from each other, we sit around, we tell jokes, we just laugh, and we just have fun. Once again, not this year. And then we get up on Christmas Eve morning, and we go to breakfast at the restaurant. We have reservations. One year we made reservations at a restaurant, because there's, how many other, there's 15 of us that go, right? I got five grandkids. I got to think now for a minute. Give me a minute. Five and six is 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah. Because Ron, Ron and Bertie always came too. So we have 15. We made reservations at this one particular restaurant that we went to every year. Every year without fail we went to it. And um, we showed up on Christmas Eve morning and told them our name because we had reservations. And uh, no, they, they, didn't take, they lost our reservation. And they couldn't sit us all together. Uh, we had to eat in little, little pairs like... You know, like, we could sit a table of six, six of you can go over here, or some of you can go over here. So we weren't all together. Yeah, we all got one bill. <laughs> Jim paid that. But uh, it was just, and we never went back to that restaurant again, ever, ever, never, ever, because we had gone there so much. We were like regulars. I mean, Jim and I went there all the time for breakfast. We went there at least twice a month for dinner. I got carry out there a lot of times. I mean, it wasn't like we were just some... Yeah, we were like loyal customers, and I realized it was a time of year and things like that happened, but they made no apologies, and uh, it was just, so we go to this other restaurant that David ended up getting a job at, and he still works there part-time, um, well now he doesn't because the restaurants are closed, but he was a short order cook because his carpentry, his because he's a carpenter, but the construction was kind of limited, so they kind of laid him off because he was just an apprentice. And uh, so he was working as a short order cook there, but now they've closed the restaurant, so he doesn't even have that. But anyway, we go there every year now. So, and their breakfast is way better. And it was just a disappointing Christmas that year. And I thought, boy, you know, can, can anything get any worse than this? <laughs> I should have seen into the future that 2020 would be worse because, uh, yeah, no, no Christmas Eve breakfast for us this year. And then we usually go to Midnight Mass, which is not at midnight anymore. I don't know why they stopped that. We always went to Midnight Mass. But then they changed it to 1030 at night. It's not, that's not Midnight Mass. I like Midnight Mass. But any, I know it's just the time, Sandy, let it go. But anyway, um, so I'll be watching it on YouTube this year. I'll be going to church. And then Christmas morning, 
the thing that will stay the same is Jim and I exchange gifts with each other. But then my whole family came over on Christmas Day, and uh, we we opened up gifts and we had fun, and it was just. But like I said, it is what it is, and I just have to accept it for what it is. Just move on, move on, and um, just know that it'll get better. It really will. So today starts my 2020 <laughs> Christmas week. And uh, my brother Michael and his wife Molly are coming by for their <laughs> curbside pickup. We're going to exchange from a distance our gifts. And then um, David said he was going to stop by to pick up his gifts. So he's going to come by and I'm going to give him his. And then Denise is uh, going to stop by. Denise and I... Like, as you know, we walk every day and all that, but Kylie had, in her school, in her class, had a uh, a covert exposure, but, so they're on quarantine, but they've been in quarantine now for, I think, eight days. I think the thing now is ten, but it was like eight days, but Denise is trying to get everything out of the house and stuff, you know, like whatever, so we're going to just be distant, far, you know, socially distant, exchanging gifts that way, and then Christy's going to come by tomorrow to get hers and then my friend was supposed to come by today but she texted me to tell me that she's looking at a house because they're looking to move so she's going to come by tomorrow instead so we'll exchange gifts tomorrow and then Wednesday I think Mary's coming by and we'll just like I said it's a whole different whole different year this year but it is what it is so okay I'm gonna get on with my day now I'm going to show you if they'll let me, I'll film them as they're doing their Christmas drop-offs and stuff. And then um, I'll be back later to tell you a story. I'm not going to show you my food this week. Um, I am going to not turn to food. and I'm going to be strong. So I am told you I'm just hoping to maintain this week. That's my goal is just to maintain this week. And I'm, I'm going to do my best and uh, not turn to food. I'm just not going to turn to food. So... And I'm going to do a Christmas tour of my house, and um, I'm going to swing by the post office and put my mask on, go to my box, my post office box, grab my mail, and get back in my car and drive off real quick, <laughs> quick like a bunny. So I might do a, a Christmas tour thing I'll post this afternoon. But that's the extent of my busy, busy day. So I will be back later on tonight to share a story. I've only got a couple more to come. You know me. I come up with a lot of stories throughout the year. But uh, I apologize if you've ever heard them before. But I have new subscribers. Maybe you haven't heard them. And maybe you've heard them before, but you forgot them. Or maybe you just enjoyed them so much that you'd like to hear them again. <laughs> like a rerun. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Okay, here's our first. Wally well, doesn't want to be on it. but I'm Oh, <laughs> I thought you just on a mic. No, you can get on it too. Our first 2020 Christmas. Yes. Dropping off presents. Sweet at Hey. Off the big Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Doesn't he look like Santa? Okay, another porch pickup. David is picking up the turkey out of the freezer that they had stored here and his Christmas packages to take to his house. <laughs> okay, another Christmas drop off. Is this, this is what? What year is this, Denise? What? 2020. 2020, that sucks. Yes. This, Kylie made something for Sandy. Oh, yeah. And Jim, but really you. And then I have other little little bags in here to to hand out to her family. It's not big boys. Maybe <laughs> big boys would have been better. But yeah, <laughs> with the hot fudge cake. <laughs> exactly. I'm thinking that right now. All righty. Okay, bye. Well, I'm back. When I was out and about today, I drove by Taco Bell and it called me and went, Sandy! And I told you I wasn't going to turn to food, and I really didn't. I got a chicken chalupa, which I looked up before I went, and it was seven points. So I had a chicken chalupa for my brunch with um, my iced tea, not my iced tea, my lemonade and cranberry juice for one point. So I had eight points. And then for lunch, I had an egg salad sandwich. So that was another three, so that brought it to 11. And then as a snack, I had a sugar-free pudding for two points, so that brought it up to 13. And then for dinner, I'm gonna have some of my chili for five points, which put me at 18, and then a little side salad 
with my dressing. I think I'm going to use the Panera dressing because I'm closing this out before dinner time tonight because it's about 5.30 right about now. Um, I usually eat dinner about 6.30 or 7. And then um, I think I'm just going to have a cup of hot tea because it's like, it's like cold out today. I don't know why. Well, it's December, Sandy. What do you think? That's why it's cold. But the story I wanted to share with you today is the day that I first met Jim's mother in person. Um, quick refresher course on one of my other stories. I had told you that the first time I technically met Jim's mother was on the phone when I was a counselor's aide. She had called the office because she wanted to find out about this new... I should figure out how to film from a camera. I realize that. But anyway, um, to, and I was a counselor's aide and uh, Jim's mother had called and wanted to know about this new girl, the Sandy, that Jim was dating, and how nice she was, or she was a good girl. <laughs> and I answered the phone, and I said, oh, my gosh, she is, oh, she's so popular. She's so nice. Everybody loves her. She's, like, very dedicated. She's in the student council. She's on, in the French club. She's, she's a very nice girl. She's on the honor roll. They were all true statements. I, the only thing I didn't tell her truthfully are that, you know, hey, you're talking to her. <laughs> But other than that, so um, years and years and years later, I told her about that. And she just thought it was funny. She never held that against me. Jim's mother was, she was a good mother-in-law. But uh, she, um, the first time I met him, Jim had, her, Jim had invited me for dinner to come to the house. And I think I've mentioned before that his brother Tom, who was three years older than Jim, uh, was always hitting on me, always wanted me to go out with him. And he just wasn't my type. I mean, I, I, well, I didn't like Jim at first, you know that. But um, they say opposites attract. Jim and I are too much alike, I think. That's why we probably went, <laughs> but anyway. Um, so uh, he, he was like always hitting on me, and he had picked me up. He picked me up because Jim was working, and they were going to meet at the house. And, and Jim had already told me, he says, Tom's going to come and pick you up. And I, I very begrudgingly said yes, because I didn't really want to, because I knew, you know, like he was going to say, oh, go out, then come out with me, we'll go on a date, blah, 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 you know, all that. And, and no matter how many times I told him, and then I started getting just kind of rude, because it's like, uh, I'm going out with your brother, I'm not going out with you. So we get to the house, and Jim's already there, and he comes out to the car, and uh, he could see I was like in a mood, because it was like, could you tell your brother to back off type of thing, you know, and, and I didn't want to start anything, so he, you know, he, I said, oh, it's, it's nothing, let's just go have dinner, and so when we were eating dinner, um, Jim's mother sat at the end of the table, and then I was sitting here, and then I guess Jim's family, my family, we didn't have like a certain seat where you sat, and that's where you always sat, uh, not like it was assigned seating, I think it just got to be a habit, because when my kids were growing up, they could sit wherever they wanted at the table, but they always sat in the same seat. So it just became, even now to this day, when we do have family dinners, they, they know that that's their seat. And if somebody sits there, they just kind of look at them like, uh, that's my seat, <laughs> so type of thing. So, um, so Jim sat across from me, and then Tom sat next to me, and then Bertie sat next to him, and then Barb sat next to Jim, and then Jim's dad was at the other end of the table. So obviously I was like, the extra thing. So I don't know why they just didn't put me on Jim's side of the table, but they put me on uh, Tom's side of the table. So I was sitting next to Tom and I was sitting across from Jim and I was talking with him and we were having dinner. And then, you know, you're nervous because it's the first time you're over visiting and you're the first time I'm meeting his family, so other than Tom. Um, and I was like really nervous in that. And so we were, I wanted to have a salad and I was trying to make my best impression, you know, because I knew that I had told her all these lies. Well, not lies, but I had embellished the truth about me. And I wanted to really come off as like everything I built myself up to be. And uh, so I asked them to pass me the dressing for the salad. Well, back then they didn't have those little fancy little caps on there. When you shake it out, just a little bit comes out. <laughs> it was just like the whole top of the jar was open. And Tom handed me the dressing. And it was I remember it was wishbone Italian dressing. <laughs> I remember this to the day. And... Uh, he handed me the dressing, and you know how with the, even now, but back then especially, you had to shake the bottle really hard to get the all the spices and stuff to come up together with the salad dressing before you poured it on your salad. And Tom reached over and handed me the dressing, and I didn't notice that he loosened the cap. And I thought the cap was on, so I give it a good shake like that. Well, 
the cap came off, and as I'm going like that, all of the dressing went all over Jim's mother. It went everywhere all over her. Oh my gosh, I was mortified. <laughs> Thinking this is your first impression of your, well, they didn't know it at the time, but your future daughter-in-law. And I got all this dressing all over her, and I was like, look, I was so much in shock, and then the evil side of me came out because I knew that Tom had done that on purpose. And I turned towards him and I started punching him. I was, so mad. I was so mad. And then Jim jumps up and he comes around and then he starts hitting on Tom. And it just started this whole big fiasco. And it was like, and Jim's mother was, she was like a saint. She just, she didn't get, she just said, you know, accidents happen, don't worry. And I'm thinking, oh, you're all full of dressing. It's like, you know. so she just got up and changed. And then Jim's dad told Jim and Tom to stop arguing and, and fighting and that. And it was just, oh, it was just like a dinner to remember. <laughs> an, an affair to remember. That should have been the name of the, uh, a dinner to remember what could have been a movie made out of that. And Jim's mother went in and changed and she came back down and she sat down and she said, went in the cupboard and got another dinner plate because the dressing had gone all over her food on her plate. And she just said, could you pass the peas, please? And she just made a whole other plate. And she never talked about it. Never talked about it. But it was just, it was the longest dinner of my life. And it took me a long time before I had enough courage to go back. And it was just like, as soon as we got done eating, I'm like, can we go now? And then... Um, Tom says, well, I'll give you a ride home. And I said, no, we're taking the bus. Jim knew how much I hated taking the bus. I hated taking the bus. I had to take three buses to go to school every day. I, if I could get out of any kind of, not getting on a bus, because if I had it when I did have a car, when I went to college, I could get to the school in 25 minutes. Taking three buses took me almost two hours there and two hours back. It was like, cause just because you got off at the one bus and you had your transfer, you had to wait till the next bus came. And then you had to wait till the next bus came to transfer onto that. It was just, it was a, you know. so I just told Jim, I said, no, we're going to, we're going to take the bus. And so Jim's dad said, no, we'll drive you. And I said, no, we'll take the bus. Cause I just wanted to give Jim a piece of my mind. And I figured the long bus ride home, he'd get a piece of my mind. Um, Tom never drove us anywhere after that. Jim went and bought a car a couple about a month later. But after that, we went, we walked, or we took a bus, or we went on our bikes. We went rode on our bikes someplace, you know, like close by. But uh, it took the longest time before I even talked to Tom because I was so mad at him. But like I said, Jim's mother never mentioned it. Even when she had me for dinner the next time, she just no. I take that back. The next time we had dinner, I when we were having a salad, she. Took the, she took the dressing bottle and she put the tightened the cap and she says, here you go. Because <laughs> I asked for somebody to pass the dressing and I was going to make sure that the cap was on. But I mean, she says, here, let me, get, let me get it. And so she grabbed it and she went to pass to me and she put the... <laughs> and I know that was just her subtle way of just making a joke, making light of the situation. <laughs> so anyway. Okay. I don't know if I've ever shared that story, but anyway. That's going to do it for tonight. And that's the way it was. Walter Concrete. You know what? I like back in the day. Back in the day when you watched the news. And you know what you watched? You watched the news. You didn't watch an opinion piece. You didn't watch a one-sided affair, whether it's to the right or to the left. I could tell you with 100% with certainty, I would not know who Walter Cronkite would vote for. Because he just gave you the news. Huntley and Brinkley gave you the news. Harry Reisner and Barbara Walters gave you the news. It's not true nowadays. You can, whatever channel you watch, you can see which way they lean. I don't like that. I like just hearing the news. Okay. Sandy, stop being so political. I've, I've created myself a monster, which is me. So, okay. Tomorrow's another day. Another story. Another day closer to Christmas. Okay. Stay safe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.